Hey guys, welcome back to another tying video with Old Florida. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be tying a backcountry tarpon shrimp. First thing we're going to do is take our SL12S short. We're going to throw it in our vise. We're going to take our thread one full eye length behind and we're going to start it right about there. Take a few wraps covering the shank of the hook with nice tight wraps and we're going to stop when we get in between the point of the hook and the barb of the hook. We can trim off that excess. Next thing we got going on the shank is going to be craft fur. So we're going to cut a good little piece out the back. This is going to be our tail material. You can be pretty generous on this. Maybe, maybe the size of maybe half a pencil if you spin it tight. We're going to take our fingers and we're going to pull out all the under fur. So pinching about an inch and a half up, an inch up, we're going to pull out all that under fur. Take our fingers, twirl them a little bit, clean this up. I'm going to pinch again, maybe two inches up now. Pull out just a little bit more. And then we're going to make our desired shape. So just by pulling out these long fibers and stacking it alongside, we're going to make that desired shape. This takes a little bit getting used to, but once you do it a couple times, you can kind of manipulate the material exactly how you want it. I didn't put quite, quite enough. I think I might add just a little bit more material. So what I'm going to do is actually pinch really tight where I want to tie it in. I want maybe two and a half times the length of the shank of the hook. So measure where you want to tie it in. I like to pinch extremely hard and keep my pointer finger pushed tightly against the shank of the hook. Put one or two really tight wraps, making sure that material doesn't slip around and off to the side of the hook. As you can see, if I spin this, it's on the very top of the hook, which is what we want. So don't be too afraid to make a couple really tight wraps. Secure that tightly down. So since I actually didn't put enough material, it's totally okay to come back in here. And all I'm going to do is take just a tiny bit more, cut some off the craft fur piece. Just line that up with what I have already on the hook. So as you can see, just taking that, laying it right over top. I'm going to just go ahead and tie that in right on top. Don't make fly tying too complicated. If you didn't put enough material or put too little material, just go ahead and add it in after. It's not a big deal. So then we're going to take our scissors after we have that tied in. I'm going to come in here from the front and trim this up on an angle, nice and tight. You can clean up the side just a little bit if you don't quite get all of it. So that's the desired shape, that's the desired length I'm looking for. I'm pretty happy with that. And we're going to take our thread and we're just going to go over this craft fur, kind of creating a little ramp and a bump. Don't be afraid to put too many wraps. Right there is just about perfect. As you can see, it's not fully cleaned up. That's totally okay. We're going to cover that up. You won't be able to see it at the end. So once I have that there, I'm going to go ahead and take my crystal flash. I'm going to take two strands of crystal flash. I'm going to go ahead and fold them over in a V-shape on the thread. I'm going to twist my fingers so I'm making a V. And as I pull up, that material is going to slip on the top of the shank of the hook. I'm going to lay it down next to my craft fur. I'm going to go ahead and wrap over it while I'm pulling down and to the sides of the shank of the hook. That way, your, your flash will stay on the sides of the hook, basically in line with the craft fur. As you can see, it's kind of lined up on this side here, on that side there. That's the easiest way I've found to tie in craft fur or sorry, crystal flash. I do like to bar this pattern. Um, I actually do it after the crystal flash has been tied in. I just like to bar the crystal flash a little bit. So what I like to do is start from the back. As you can see, I started grabbing pretty much the shank of the hook, sliding my fingers back just a little bit, making that first bar. We're going to put four in total. Run your Sharpie down the top and bottom after you slide your fingers back. So top and bottom, after you do the sides, slide a little bit more, top and sides. 
all that does is give you a nice, nice, even barring. The tighter you pull, the tighter the line will be, and that's always what we're looking for, the nice little clean lines. You don't have to go too crazy, just light pressure. So next thing we got going is going to be our EP brush. This is a Foxy brush. What I do like to do is if you use this already, I like to come in here and I like to pinch just about a little bit off so you have some wire exposed just to cover from about the back of the tie-in point to the front of the tie-in point. So that little ramp, I'll lay this over top. And I'll go ahead and start wrapping this down nice and tight. Don't be afraid to use too many wraps. And we're going to fall all the way off on that ramp so it's nice and smooth. We're almost at bear shank again. And we're going to leave our thread right there. Next thing we got is to palmer this material backwards. We're going to keep pulling this all backwards and we're going to put probably around five to six wraps of this. So there's one. And as you palmer, clean it up a little bit. There's two. There's three. Four. Five. We'll do a sixth one. And we want to end up pretty much on the smoother shank. We want to make sure we fall off that bump. That's very important because if you don't do that, then tying in the squirrel is going to be quite hard. I will come in here with a bodkin and I'll pick all this foxy brush out. And then what I like to do before I tie it off, I'll take my index finger and I'll take my bodkin and I'll place it right where I want to tie off the brush. And I'll basically just use the bodkin to separate the material. This gives you a much cleaner tying point and you won't get all that bulk of excess fibers being trapped. So that little tie-in point right there that you could see that I split with the bodkin, that's why I do it. So two tight wraps, pull it all backwards with one hand, and then two tight wraps right in front. You can come in here with scissors and trim this off. I actually prefer to pull down on the thread nice and tight, and I'll just go ahead and wiggle this for about a second. And most of the time it should just pop right off and then pull everything backwards again and put two tight wraps right on top of that to keep the material back. If you do it with scissors, you run the risk of having a sharp little burr sticking out the front and as soon as you tie down, you're gonna break your thread. It happens to all of us. If that happens to you, go ahead and start your thread again and just keep on tying. I do like to make sure before I add the next material that this is all picked out nice and cleanly and it looks how we want it to. So once you got that picked out, looking nice and pretty, I'll clean these wraps up just a little bit more. Maybe a little bit further up, so we're ready to tie in our next material, which is going to be squirrel tail. A tip for tying this in, if you could see, they're all laying forward. If I go ahead and just pinch this right here and cut it like this, you're going to have the tips not really aligned, so when you do cut it, pull it back off the shank and now you see all the tips will be aligned pretty much for you so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that just like that a nice little healthy clump uh, I'm actually gonna do a little bit more than that I'll show you why in one sec a little bit hard to do on camera so I cut that off and now you have that nice little barring right there it's only barred on the top side most of the time so try to just take that for what it's worth. If you could remember to try to orientate the top of the black up. So I'm gonna take that, kind of align that the length I'm looking for. I like to go a little bit shorter than the black part on the Foxy brush. I'm gonna take my fingers. I'm just gonna hold that right there. Spinning my thread for thread control helps a bunch. So when I take tension off to do a loose wrap, it wants to kick back toward my hand. We have a video posted on our YouTube channel to show you how to do that. Uh, basically, I just took two capture wraps. I'm gonna take my thumb and my index finger and kind of just roll this material right where I want it. 
So once you have full coverage of the hook, you can go ahead and pinch your thread wraps so they don't slide, and then start cinching down nice and tight. Once you cinch down nice and tight, make sure you have full coverage everywhere. If you don't have full coverage, which I did a pretty good job, if you could see, covering that shank, but if you didn't, all you have to do is go ahead and cut a little piece off this again, trim it, lay it over, and basically retie it in, which it's not a big deal if you missed coverage. Just go ahead and go back over it. And then once we have that nice tied down, we can come in here and lift this material up. I like lifting one half at a time. So lift straight up, chop that off. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Lift straight up and chop that off. Lifting it, all it does is create a nice smoother ramp when you cut it. So if you could take a look as I spin this, the front of the eye of the hook kind of has like a small little taper while I cut it. All that does is provides a nice little base for when you tie this material down. You can see, I got a little bit in the eye, I'm a little OCD so I'm going to trim that out. You could see as you take nice tight cleaning wraps, it'll want to just kind of slide forward. You actually want that because it gives you a nice little cone shaped head. So as you add some more wraps, you're building a nice cone head right here. Don't go too crazy with the wraps, but you want them to be nice and precise. So maybe eight to 10 wraps, and then we're gonna go ahead and whip finish. Two sets of three is typically the best. That's usually what I've found holds the best. You could go a little crazier than that, but you really don't need to. So right from here, we whip finished it, pull down nice and tight, make sure that's super tight. We're gonna go ahead and trim our thread off, and that's gonna be pretty much the done fly. As you can see, that foxy brush keeps it nice and plumed out. So this natural squirrel tail pushes water and it's going to push a ton of water, get the fish's attention. Nice little subtle crystal flash. It's just a nice little backcountry shrimp. I do tie a different little version of this that I'll probably post a video on coming up here soon. If you haven't checked out our Instagram, I did post a step-by-step -step on that one. That's tied with SF Blend. Kind of a similar style, but it does have bead chain eyes. But this is a deadly backcountry pattern. Perfect for snook and tarpon. I give it a tie. Enjoy throwing it. Super lightweight, super easy to throw. Definitely fill the box pretty quickly. Uh, as always, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. Make sure to like this video. And as always, we hope to see you out on the water.